Well, this one hurts. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, the funk soul brother. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, the funk soul brother. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, the funk soul brother. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Right about now. What's poppin' y'all? Man, Cloudboy Bales. Uh, well, I guess you all saw this game. Um, Packers end up losing this one to the New York Giants. 24-22 uh, to 22 was the final score. The Packers dropped to 6-7 and seven and honestly now out of a playoff spot. New York Giants won three games in a row after really looking not so good the Giants have now actually looked like a team that can actually win out. You know, they're looking a lot more confident. For the Green Bay sake, you know, we went on the road. There were so many things in this game that, you know what, you look at and you go, I wish this would have happened, but it didn't. And out of out of respect, I, I really wish, I really wish we were able to win this game. It was unfortunate, but... Um, there were so many chances for either team. And to be honest, this game could have went either way. You know what? New York Giants marched down the field. They got the game-winning field goal. Um, you know, uh, that was... You know, I, I'm going to not be upset about this. I guess, to be real, the, the Giants really won this game. I think in our reality, we got lucky because of that fumble. You know, if that fumble wouldn't have happened, if that f if we would have actually been able to hold our ground, and that terrible Joe Barry defense would not have been able to actually stop him, you know, from getting into field goal range, you know, I would have actually said this would have been the most unlucky win ever. So in reality, the Giants won this game. They just almost choked out of their own misery. So uh, let's just be real. Um, we're gonna give the game ball. To Carrington Valentine just for making that unbelievable play. Um, but I guess a lot happened in this game. A lot I think we wish that we could have seen happen. But you know what? Everybody's going to be calling for Joe Barry to be fired. And I, I get this. I understand this. I think a lot of people understand that I've been wanting him fired for a long time too. But... In reality, anyone who gets put in the defensive coordinator position is going to be calling for the, the guys to get fired. I mean, we never, defensive coordinators are never... All defensive coordinators suck. There's never been a good one. I mean, you just put a throw... You throw a random guy in there and expect him to play... You expect him, and then it's like, oh, he sucks. Well, of course! That's the whole point. You're never going to find a defensive coordinator that's good enough. The only way you win is if your players do the right thing. In our instance, our guy got beat and we got put in the field goal range. I, There's nothing you could do about it. But our defense in its entirety did not really have that good of a game. There were so many opportunities where DeVito really could have gotten sacked and he was able to get out of the pocket and run, which I, we saw him do. I remember DeVito. Um, I mean, I owe DeVito for getting Paul Christ fired when he was last year when he was on Illinois. I owe him that. I mean, thank you. But, man, I never knew he was going to be that good in the NFL where I'd say he's better than Daniel Jones. I mean, this guy actually really is not a bad quarterback by any means. And the Giants are, as I said last week, I'm like, the Giants are a team I think people could say is a trap game because they've been playing a lot better as of recently. I know we have. So honestly, I said this game could go all the way. I said maybe I think the Packers, because we beat the Chiefs, are going to have momentum. But what happened was I think we got too ahead of ourselves, and the Giants technically won this game. We got lucky because of that big fumble. But what really cost the game was that punt return fumble. Now, Nixon bobbled the punt. He fumbled it, and he got back on top of the ball. And what I would have done is I would have just laid on the ball. Instead, he gets back up knowing he doesn't even have full control of the ball and then fumbles it, and then that was the disaster. Giants are able to score, and then we try to get back into it, but I guess, realistically, I'm surprised we couldn't do anything because, realistically, this Giants O-line was terrible, and for some reason, we could not sack him. I don't know what it is. It just was unfortunate, and 
I guess I got to think more positive, but you know what? They win out, they could still make the playoffs, but you know what? This it, this is a little roadblock, and that's unfortunate. Jordan Love on the day went 25 of 30, 39, 218 yards, a touchdown, an interception, and a fumble. Two carries for two yards. I, I mean, he got sacked twice for 15 yards. Compared to the last three weeks, this was not his best game, and I can admit that. The first half, he just looked really rusty. Later on, I think you started to see some other things. But you know what? I think there's some things you could take away from it, you know. A.J. Dillon, 15 carries, 53 yards, 2 for 25. Um, Tucker Craft with 4 catches for 64 yards. Romeo Dobbs had 4 for 32. Jaden Reed, 8 for 27 and 4 carries for 38 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Samori Toure had 2 for 22. Patrick Taylor, 2 for 22 and 4 carries for 38 yards. Tontavian Wicks, 2 for 20. And Malik Heath had a catch for 6 yards, which was the only touchdown thrown by Love. The fumbles on the day were won by Jordan Love, and of course, Nixon was the other fumble. Um, on the defensive side, Darnell Savage and Isaiah Duck McDuffie both led the way with seven tackles. Not much tackles on the day. No sacks, no interceptions. There really wasn't anything you could do. Anders Carlson went three of four from the day. Um, I guess you can't say much. On the, G on, the New York on the New York side, Tommy DeVito went 17-21, 158 yards and touchdown, seven and 10 carries for 71 yards. Saquon Barkley, 20 carries for 86 yards and two touchdowns, few catches for 15. A couple, not much from anywhere else. Wondell Robinson had six catches for 79 yards and two carries for 36 yards. He was a big deal. Isaiah Hodgins, two for 22 and the touchdown. Daniel Bellinger with two for 15 Two for 13 for Jalen Highland and two for 14 for Darius Slayton. Both fum fumbles were on Saquon Barkley and Bobby McCain. Deontay Banks with 12 total tackles on the game and Jason Pinnock with the interception for New York. Randy Bullock went one of two from the field goal tries, including the game winner. Um, so um, we'll just say this. The fact that we were able to actually take this lead and, and, you know, I was like, you know, the last couple times we haven't seen Jordan Love really do this. We only seen it once against the Saints. This time the defense just couldn't call through. You know, and the same thing happened against the Saints. You know, we, they, the defense really shallowed up. They just missed it. This time they hit it. So, you know what? This It was unfortunate. Nothing you could do about this one. It's a win I wish we could get back. But a lot of play calling on LaFleur's part, a killing, I mean, the, the real reason I don't know why Jaden Reed is still doing... They're still doing jet sweeps and flips and all these passes. It just didn't seem right. I don't know what that play call was on the two-point conversion. I really wish we would have got that because it would have probably went... The game probably would have went to overtime instead. But it is unfortunate. And the only thing I wish for is... Um, I guess, you know what? Every game that matters in the end, you know, this could be a game that definitely you know, we get away from. You know what? They could win out and we could still make the playoffs, but a lot can happen. Um, so that's the unfortunate thing. Um, in the means, um, very happy with, you know, us playing as of lately, but, you know, this was a little roadblock on the road. Next week, we are at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Team with a good defense, a team that right now would actually be in the playoffs because of how bad their division is. Obviously, the streak comes to an end. Our home streak still is active. For our, our home December win streak is still active. But, you know what? Let's just do whatever we do and win, win, win. You know what? That's all I can say. You know what? It's not over. I don't think... Games like this make me really rethink, like, oh, can we win a playoff game? A game in the playoffs? Probably not. But getting into the playoffs, does this make me optimistic for the what's to come for the future of the organization? Absolutely. But this was a little bit of a roadblock. And yes, you're going to see Joe Barry. Oh, we should get him fired. But you know what? Those are roadblocks. Let's move past this. And especially, I'm going to get to go to my first Packer game next weekend. So I'm really excited about that. So you probably won't see a video until later that day when I get back home.
because I got to drive. I'm driving up there and driving back the day of. So that'll be fun. So if you like what you see, comment below, subscribe with your thoughts, and as always, we will see you next time. Go Pack Go!